Are you good, Zach? <laughs> Okay, so originally I thought I was supposed to come here and talk about carbon nanotube speakers, which I actually gave a chat about last year. But I now today found out that I'm also supposed to talk about invisibility cloak, which I'm guessing is why a lot of you guys are here. Anyway, okay, so how many of you have seen our YouTube video? Because I know it's pretty popular about our invisibility cloak. Anyone? Raise your hands. No one? Wow. Okay, well, it doesn't show up too well, but I'll show you real quickly. This video has been all over YouTube lately because of Harry Potter and invisibility cloaks and things. So this is our nanotube sheet. Yeah. So you just turn the power on and off, and well, anyway, all the other YouTube videos. But um, so that is my goal. By the end of this talk, I want everyone to understand how that works. But before I get to that, I'm first going to go in and. Pay attention, because I'm going to quiz you about halfway through. I'm going to ask you to try to explain it. And then after that, if you guys can't get it, I'll go through it. But to give you an introduction, first I'm going to talk about carbon nanotube speakers, because that's something that this is based on. And that's what I've worked on a lot at UT Dallas and our Nanotech Institute. So first off, speakers. Um, actually, I'll ask, have any of you gone into that room next door and checked out our nanotube speaker, the one you play at the piano? OK, one person. Anyone else? Raise your hands. Only one person. OK, you guys need to go next door and check it out. It's pretty cool. But basically what it is is there's a little piano you can play, and there's a box. <laughs> Should I not use this one? Are we good? Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, so there's a box you can see in there. And if you uh, just play on the piano, it'll produce sound without any moving parts. There's no speaker cone. There's nothing like that. So how does that work? Well, first off, what is sound? Um, and I guess, can anyone answer that question? Okay, you. Sound is vibrations. Okay, that's correct. You want to expand more? It's a wave. Okay, yeah, that's basically the answer. It's a wave of vibrations. But the cool thing to me is that, you know, I'm standing here. I know my ears are what here, but I'm hearing things. All that's around me is air. How is the sound getting to my ears? And like you say, there's a wave of vibrations. So what is sound? Sound is when the air in a room or when, when some medium, normally air, that's normally what's around your ears, gets press, pressed and released. There's pressure and then a lack of pressure. And what that does is it creates a wave, it creates vibrations. So if I sit here and I bang on this table, oh, no one woke up. But anyway, if I bang on this table, there's this shock wave, there's pressure of air that goes from the table to your ears, and that's how you hear it. So normally, how do you make a speaker? You know, the speakers in headphones, in your car, something like that. You normally take a magnet and you take a cone, just like a piece of paper, that can push wind back and forth, and you just turn the magnet on, off, on, off really quickly, and you push air back and forth really quickly. And if you do it very, very fast, you know, someone in orchestra maybe knows an A440. If you do it at 440 times a second, you hear the note A in your ear. Well, so that's sound. So the question is, normally you do it by moving air back and forth. How do we do it? Well, we do it with something that's pretty special here, and I'm going to show you something that I think is cool, but may or may not work. So this here is a nanotube forest. We grow these in our institute. And the cool thing about it, so this is just a bunch of nanotubes sitting on here. What I can do is I can grab from the side, and maybe you guys can see that. And I just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. Now if I release, it's as light as air. You can see it's just floating around. And so what this is, this is a sheet of carbon nanotubes. It's a bunch of carbon nanotubes just held together. So the cool thing is we can create these sheets of nanotubes, and they have very special properties. First off, what you saw in this video, which I have now disconnected. Anyway, what you see in the video is carbon nanotube sheet. One second here. Well, anyway, when that behaves, it's a sheet of carbon nanotubes. That there. And you can see, you can see through it. That's the first thing that makes it cool. The second thing that makes it cool is that it's electrically conductive. You can pass electricity through it and it flows through. It can heat up that way. And so the cool thing that we do with this is that we heat and cool it very quickly. Now, can anyone tell me what happens when you heat air? There's a few different things that happen, but huh? It expands. it expands, yeah. So now, thinking back, we're saying that you can take a cone and move it back and forth and create waves. Well, you can do the same thing if you make air expand and contract. So what we do is we take these nanotube sheets and we heat and cool them very, very quickly. But all that basically means is we take a wave, like the wave that comes out of your uh, 
you know, a music player or something, and we feed that into the nanotube speaker, and by heating and cooling it very quickly, we heat and cool the air around it very quickly, and you hear those as sound waves. So I really recommend after this you go next door and play around on that piano, and it doesn't sound great, but it's pretty loud, and you can see that just this nanotube sheet, the thing that I just pulled for you in air here, can produce sound without moving. So that's you know, really interesting, and why are nanotube sheets great for that? Well, A, they're transparent, so you could, for instance, put a speaker on a window, and you can see through your speaker. They're electrically conductive, so you can use electricity to drive them. But one other thing that makes it important is that you can heat and cool them very quickly. As you saw, they're very low density. They float in air. What, one of the things that that means is that when you heat it, the heat, instead of heating up the sheet, almost instantaneously heats up the air around it. So this effect is called the thermoacoustic effect. It's a fancy word, but it's been around for 100 years. Alexander Graham Bell, who you might have heard of, started it. But he couldn't make speakers like we can because he was limited. All he had were little thin foils, and when you heat and cool them, they don't put energy into the air very quickly. Well, you can do the same thing. For instance, you can take a frying pan and put it in your stove at home and heat it up. And then you can take it off and cool it down. Why does that not work as a speaker? Well, the answer is it does, but it only works as fast as the heat goes into the air. So how long does it take to heat a frying pan up and cool it back down? Probably minutes. At least minutes, I'd say. Well, with little foils, you can do it in seconds. But with our nanotubes, we can do it 100,000 times a second. The maximum frequency our ears can hear is 20,000 times. So we can produce any sound your ears can hear, we can produce with our nanotube sheet speakers. So that's step one, nanotube sheet speakers. You can take these materials, you heat them up, and you can create the air around it, the water around it, whatever, you can heat it up. So now part two, I'm going to explain this invisibility cloak. But before I do, does anyone here have any ideas, any guesses, anything at all as to how this maybe works? And then I'll try to explain. You? Um, does it bend the light? Yes, it bends light. How does it bend light? Um, that I'm not sure. OK. And you? I have two guesses. Either okay. the fibers start to vibrate so fast you can't see them anymore. OK. Or the second is it bends the light by creating heat. So uh -huh. it bends light. OK. OK. Yeah, it's basically the second one, not the first one. I'm glad no one told me it's just magic. But anyway, so um, we have a better demo of that out there. But basically, right before this, I went and grabbed this little plastic cup and stole one of Zach's pencils. And what I wanted to show you is something that you've probably seen before in science classes and books. But basically, if I take this cup of water, put the pencil inside, now look at it from the side, you don't see a straight pencil anymore, right? You see kind of the pencil has been displaced. It's in different parts. Similarly, how many of you have seen a mirage, like on the surface of the ground? You know, yeah, it's Texas. It's hot out. You see mirages all the time on the surface of cars, things like that. And there we go. <laughs> OK. Sorry about that. So anyway. Um, basically what this is, this is not truly an invisibility cloak. I like to say it's an obscurity cloak because it works on the mirage effect. What this is, what we were seeing earlier, and I'll play it one more time, this is a nanotube sheet in water. And when you heat it up, the water around it heats up, just like you were saying. And so the cool thing, let's go back to something else. So the cool thing is, here, why does the pencil bend? It bends because light travels differently in air and in water. It's called refraction, and it can bend light. That's why the pencil appears bent or in a different position. Well, you can do that by going from air to water, but how do you very easily, like for instance with this now tube sheet, how do you very easily change from air to water? There's no on-off switch for that. You can't just make the water all of a sudden disappear in a fraction of a second. So what we do, though, is we take something else, advantage of something else. If you take water and heat it up, it changes density. And you know that this is true because think about it. What happens when you heat water to it boils? It changes density enough that it basically floats away. It mixes with the air. So if you heat water up enough, its optical properties, how light goes through it, is similar to how air works. But when it's cool, when it's at room temperature, it's like this in this cup, and you bend the pencil. So the trick that we play here is that right at the surface of the now tube sheet, we're putting in a lot of heat. We're getting it almost as hot as the boiling point of water. But then far away, that's going to get annoying. OK, well, I'm almost done. But far away, maybe if I talk softer, farther away, it's cooler. And what happens is that the air, uh, sorry, the water close to the nanotube sheet has a different index of refraction, has a different density. And so therefore, as the light goes through it, the light bends. So the reason why I say this is the mirage effect, or an obscurity cloak, and not an invisibility cloak, is to be invisible, you want, you want to see through me. You want the light that's coming from my back to pass through me and come out the front. That's not what this does. But what it does do is that the light that normally is coming from behind the sheet and shining into your eyes, and originally here, you can see 
I think it's written like invisibility cloak or something. What does it say back there behind the sheet? Yeah, invisibility cloak. So normally that light shines through the sheet. But when you heat it up, the light now, instead of going through the sheet, bends and shines somewhere else. So you can actually, it's not invisible. You can still see that invisibility cloak, but you now have to look at it from a different direction. And that's what happens with the mirage effect. When you heat up the surface of you know, the concrete really hot, then the air nearby it changes density, and the light bends around the surface. So it's the same thing. We're basically creating a mirage on demand. We put a sheet in water, we turn the electricity on, and we've created a mirage. So that's the effect in a nutshell. You had a question? I had a question. Does it sure. only work at this angle, this angle of incident? Well, if you look at it straight on, does it still work? Um, I mean, this is looking at straight on. You mean with the sheet flat? Well, are we looking mm -hmm. at it straight on or are we looking at it uh, So you're looking straight on at the invisibility cloak, and then the sheet, you're looking straight down the side of it. Right, so if you yeah. look at the sheet mm -hmm. from a different angle, does it yeah. still appear as a mirage? So it'll appear as a mirage, but it won't clearly mask that, because what will happen in that case is you just create kind of this jumble of water that's hot and cold, and light will bend everywhere. So it'll become fuzzy but you won't necessarily see it disappear because the light is still trying to get through the sheet and come to you. So it's not a nice, perfect invisibility cloak, but it's a step. It sounds cooler to call it an invisibility cloak, but it's a good obscurity cloak. You can hide light, you can jumble light around so that you can't see what's going on. You can't necessarily see through objects, though. So I'm not sure I did the best job explaining that, so does anyone have any questions? Or At this point, could one of you explain to me how this works? No one has that courage? Well, any questions about that? OK, so you all understood perfectly then, right? <laughs> Thank you. OK. Well, I guess I'll leave this video playing until the end. And that's my talk. Thank you.